All right, everyone. Good evening, everyone. I call the city council meeting for Wednesday, January 27th to order. I think we're in feedback. If you want to get yeah. Thank you. Um, at this time, uh, we'll have a moment of silence as this is uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day. Uh, Auschwitz was liberated on this day in 1945. Uh, Otto Frank was one of those liberated. His daughter was the famous Anne Frank. So moment of silence, please. Thank you, everyone. If Alderman Dunn, you'd lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Alderman Dunn. Uh, Brian, our city clerk, uh, Mr. Krupp, if you'd call the roll, please. Dunn. Here. Dorman. Here. McGinnis. Here. Lee. She supposedly is on, but I don't know. I'll come back to her. Grip. Here. Condon. Here. Peacock. Here. Dickman. Here. Jobjen. Here. Ambrose. Here. And Alderwoman Lee. Yeah, I'm here. Perfect. Ten present, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Uh, in our technology challenge world, we'll just pause every now and then. Thank you, Brian. So good evening again, everyone, as we begin the City Council uh, meeting. I'd like to welcome everybody in attendance and everybody that's viewing on our technology devices. Uh, we respectfully welcome your comments and opinions. Please keep in mind that as you talk to the Council, you're talking and sharing your thoughts with all Davenporters and fellow folks all around the region. We're happy you're participating in your city government and that ask your participation, please reflect the common desire we all seek to make Davenport a better place for all, a safe, stable, and welcoming community. If you have a phone, uh, please put it on silent or turn it off so it doesn't mess with anybody who's talking tonight. Uh, when you come to the podium, if you have an item to discuss, please discuss it with us as a body and not any individual uh, person. We ask that you're respectful of us, we'll be respectful of you. Thank you very much. Uh, will an alderman please move approval of the city council meeting minutes for January 13th? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. Ms. Spiegel, city administrator, any update for us? A reminder that we will continue and actually conclude our budget workshops this Saturday uh, in this room at 8.30 a.m. Uh, much like this meeting, people will be able to watch live. Um, so this one is a little bit of the follow-up from operating and capital and then a discussion about the work plan for 2021. Thank you very much. Uh, next item, will the Alderman please move report of the Committee of the Whole for January 20th. Second. Second. Motion. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Very good. Um, we have three appointments this evening. We have two to the Affirmative Action Advisory Committee. Jasmine Newton is a reappointment, and Rory Nimitz is a reappointment. And then one to Historic Preservation, a new appointment, Julie Sage. I'll accept a motion. Second. Motion and a second to approve these appointments. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. Those are approved. Thank you for... Approving those. All right, next item is petitions and communications from council members and mayor. Um, looking to my colleagues, I see Alderman Jobjian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, just an announcement that uh, Tuesday, February 9th, I'll be conducting a sixth ward meeting, be doing so virtually. Um, maybe to the delight or the dismay of uh, uh, many of the sixth ward residents, I will not be having a guest speaker. Just We'll just sit down, chat, plat, plan out the, the year and hash out a couple of things. And then secondly, um, I'd like to thank Public Works Director Nicole Gleason and her staff for a great response to this snow event. And so I know I'm probably one of those that's pretty quick to uh, share the negative comments that I receive. And so I want to say thank you again. And I wanted to share along uh, some of the great feedback that I got from residents of the 6th Ward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Pausing. Alderman Peacock. Yes. Alderman Peacock, then Alderman Lee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just like my counterpart, 
Alderman Jones, and I'd like to thank Nicole Gleason and her team. And every time there is a an issue or situation in Davenport, one of the first people I call is either Corey Spiegel or uh, Nicole. I think with the snow removal, I think everybody thinks their snow should remove immediately. And of course, you know, me being one of the newer alternates, I was like, hey, Nicole, can you please square me away? And she she always answered the call or answered the email quickly. And shortly thereafter, uh, somebody's pretty pleased about the snow removal. So big hats off to your team, and I greatly appreciate it. Um, I do have some comments, and, and please bear with me. Um, sometimes I usually would do this virtually, but I decided to come in. And when you do this virtually, it's not the same unless you do it in person. So here's my appearance. So uh, I really didn't really, anybody who knows me, I'm a real big proponent of education. And I know this is not the purview for it, but since I do have the mic and I do have the opportunity to say something about it, and I will, because one of my counterparts once said that we should be great stewards or great stakeholders when it comes to education, since we do a, since use their term, a transactional relationship. Um, I hope everybody is tracking things that happen at the state capitol, what particularly Senate 5159. Um, this bill is a voucher bill, and what it'll do nine times, what it does will take $54 million out of the school budget. And why is Alderman Peacock talking about it? Well, for one thing, I'm a, primer, I, I'm a former realtor. And one of the questions that I always say this, when people want to come to the Davenport area, they always ask, how, well, how are your schools? And that's why we need to be, play bigger partners and make sure we have an engaged conversation with the Davenport School Board. And I will say this, that that bill would possibly uh, finance the cycle that could lead to segregation in Davenport schools, allowing wealthier families to flee public schools for less diverse charter schools or private schools, and reducing fund for poor and minority students. This would take Davenport backwards and away from the hopes and intentions expressed by my colleague, Alderman Ray Ambrose of Davenport being a great city, only, only for some. A second is Corey Spiegel mentioned that we had budget talks and those budget talks went well. And I always like the performance, I always like how it was structured. But one of the things that really, uh, I wouldn't say chat left behind, something that gets my energy going is when we say one thing, but we do another. And what I mean by that, we play lip service when it comes to marginalized communities. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we as a body had um, one or two joint sessions with the Civil Rights Commission. I won't say two or three, maybe. And the feedback I got, I said the same comments at the workshop. So the reason why I'm doing it, because I'm saying it before the whole entire city council and those who's watching, is that we heard from the, the, the residents, we heard from the commissioners, and everybody who participated. And what, I, what we heard was that, you know, we hopefully that we would fully fund or try to fund the Civil Rights Commission. And hopefully, by that, we would um, do several things. I would run those things off right now. We would increase the process of, case, of cases being heard quicker. Uh, we'll meet the needs of the marginalized community. Uh, we, we, we talk a lot. Some of my, some of my colleagues talk about uh, less concern about public safety. But also in public safety is defending civil rights protection. We tend to forget that. And which, which entity does that? That's the Civil Rights Commission. And I hope we can fully fund the, if we look at their budget, hope my colleagues would ask, when we do budget talks, that we really look at it, go back, ask what does it really mean to fund the uh, Civil Rights Commission? And I hope we can do better justice with that. With those comments, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Peacock. Anyone else, Alderman Lee, do you have a comment? I do. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say that the United States has 4% of the world population, but we have greater than 25% of the world's COVID cases. Um, we're still at greater than 30% positivity, um, according to John Hopkins, and that's compared to 9% in the rest of the country. So. Uh, no matter how tired we're getting of this, 
the, the CDC is saying that we're going into a period that uh, is a very dangerous period. So it's important to wear masks. They're even saying in some circumstances wear two masks, the cloth one outside, a regular one, so it's tight against your face. Uh, keep your distance. Uh, try to not go into public places if you can. And we just need to um, be respectful and caring of each other through this difficult time. The good news on another point is the United States is going back to be part of the world in uh, rejoining the Paris Climate Convention Agreement. It's called Paris because that's where the city was, where the um, convention was held. And that agreement sets baselines, milestones, and the opportunity for verification for um, we are trying to keep the increase in the global average temperature to less than two degrees centigrade above pre-industrial levels. So our job is to plan and report on the efforts to reduce emissions that contribute to climate change. Um, I think it's really important to know that all the countries in the world have um, joined this convention, this agreement, except for Nicaragua, Syria, and for the last couple of years, the United States. So we were one of three that refused to, <clears throat> to be involved in it, and now we're jumping back in, um, and we're on it. So I just wanted to, to congratulate us on that. And um, I'll be sharing some more information on um, things that Public Works has been doing to contribute to reduction of emissions and um, other environmental things at another time. So again, thank you very much. And we're back in the agreement. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman Lee. Anyone else? Pausing. Very good. Okay, we'll move on to our individual items, approval of items on the discussion agenda. The first one is a resolution approving the proposed Section 18 disposition plan for the city's 42 scattered site public housing units. City of Davenport's the petitioner. Is there any public with comment on this item? Consideration. Hearing and seeing none. Okay, Alderman Ambrose moves. Is there a second? Second. There's a second, Alderman McGinnis. Thank you. Any discussion from any Alderman? Very good. Brian, please call the roll call. Lee? Yes. Condon? Yes. Dorman? Yes. Jokjin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Peacock? Yes. Grip? Yes. Ambrose? Yes. And Dickman? Yes. And yes, as your honor. Very good. That resolution is adopted. The next item is a motion accepting downtown Davenport partnerships master plan, downtown Davenport 2030, a resilient city. Is there any public with comment? Okay. Again, please uh, state your name, ward, or address. If you're not from here, we'd love to know where you you're from. And five minutes, please. Thank you. Sure, Bill Handel, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Also. Uh, 1514 West High in Davenport. And uh, last week uh, I was kind of thrown for a loop because uh, I saw this item on the agenda and did not know at that point what was intended if this was meant that you accepted their findings or if you were just accepting this report that was kindly given by the downtown partnership. I, I later found that it was actually that you were just accepting it, uh, the, the gift of the report from the partnership, and, and had I known that, I think I might have responded a little more charitably and uh, maybe rationally even to the, the kind gift that the partnership has provided of this report. And uh, But the one thing I do want to remind everyone is something I, I talked about a few weeks ago is, uh, is uh, the concept that, if you'll remember your junior high algebra, the Venn diagrams, you've got the the one circle is what's good for the Davenport city, citizens, the city of Davenport. Another sit, uh, circle is what's good for the downtown Davenport partnership. And I think overall, I think we would say that there's a good overlap because if it's good for the partnership, for the most part, it is going to be good for the city. But I think we need to be aware that that's not always the case. Uh, 
one of the things that I noticed on the report is uh, although we had a New York-based design firm um, that, that actually authored the, uh, the report with the comments, of course, from the steering committee here in town, um, you would think that uh, somebody from New York would be very strong in, in historic preservation of the buildings, and, uh, and I think they would be. However, they knew that their, the piper, they had to pay the piper. They knew that the people that are funding the report uh, have an interest in clearing as many vacant or, at this point, unused properties or, that, uh, that we can. And, and uh, so I, I think that the YMCA site is something that I think is not a good thing for us to, uh, to be demolishing, and uh, as I, I talked about earlier. But um, anyway, uh, let's go back to the site then. It was Washington Square that our founder, LeClaire, um, deeded to the city way back when in 1839, I guess. Uh, at that point, Washington had only been away from, from this earthly plane, probably less than John Lennon, the Beatles, is at this point. So he was in a lot of people's uh, memories. And uh, anyway, um, it soon became uh, a gathering place for the German citizens in our area and had some historic you know, applications for that. Um, the, uh, the park itself had a fountain in the middle with the, what's now the Germania statue that we all see, but it was in the center of it. And then World War I came and anti-German fervor took over our city and the uh, statue was vandalized. It was melted down as far as I know. The, the, the park never recovered, even though it had such a historic um, a place in our city, so that um, in 1961 or two, uh, the city decided to sell a good portion of that site to the YMCA. I think it's been established that the city had every right to do that. They had every right to sell that, but was it an improper thing? I mean, there are certain things that you do not do. Uh, the Catholic Church doesn't blow up the churches that they no longer need. They pass them on, sell them, and, uh, and it becomes somebody else's church. I, I think for the same reason, to have that property go to the Y was, was not really a, in the interest of the city. Um, and later on, the rest of the site was sold. So I think uh, we have a very historic building there. It became a, a gathering ground for people of all backgrounds, all incomes, all nationalities. And a lot of people love that building, just as the current uh, Y people uh, have, uh, have said. So I, I think uh, we have a historic commission for our city as we've, we're taking a nomination for a new member today. I think uh, we ought to consider that perhaps um, what's best for the city, preserving that building is not maybe necessarily consistent with uh, the YMCA's uh, stated purpose right now, and let's uh, see if we can't save it. I uh, urge you to think about that. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. My name is Dale Gilmore, and I live in the Sixth Ward. First of all, I'd like to thank the council for putting this on the discussion agenda and allowing me to speak on this motion. I spoke with Tom Warner, legal counsel, after the meeting last Wednesday, and he assured me that my concern was unwarranted. Tom, if you believe I'm misrepresenting anything, any position, your position in any way, please interrupt me. I want my point to be presented clearly. Tom told me that passage of this motion would not commit or obligate the city to do anything. Passage of this motion was merely to put a time stamp on the plan. With all due respect, I disagree. Can, can I add something, Dale? Sure. I think that uh, I think that Mr. Handel summarized it well. I think it's a thanks for a gift kindly given. I think that's the best way to think about it. Okay. Well, with, with, with all due respect, I disagree. My understanding of the word accepting implies agreement. If the only purpose of this motion is to put a timestamp on receiving the document, the motion should read, 
Motion to acknowledge receipt of the Downtown Davenport Partnerships Master Plan. May I give an example of my concern of the word accepting? Let's say you're in the market for a car. You find one at a dealer that you like. Well, the car you like, not necessarily the dealer. The price is $10,000. Now, after a test drive, you make the following offer. I will give you $9,500 for the car if it includes new tires and alignment and a full tank of gas. The salesman says he has to talk it over with his manager, and that's a standard thing, and he leaves. Now, upon returning, he states, we are accepting your offer. Now the dealer is obligated to provide new tires and alignment and a full tank of gas by accepting your offer. The reason I'm so concerned about the verbiage of this motion is I want all parties to be clear on the meaning of this motion. By changing the motion to the example listed above, I believe there would be clarity and a clear understanding of the intent of the motion. Again, I believe the motion should read, Motion to acknowledge receipt of the Downtown Davenport Partnerships Master Plan. So by simply deleting the word accepting and substituting the words to acknowledge receipt of the would satisfy the timestamp requirement and provide clarity to all parties involved. Thank you. I appreciate your consideration and understanding. That being said, I would now request the chair entertain a motion to make the above changes. Mr. Hamm. Okay. Thank you. Kyle Carter, fifth ward and executive director of Downtown Partnership. Honorable mayor and alderman, uh, without a strong and inclusive central heart, a city tends to become a collection of interests isolated from one another. It falters at producing something greater socially, culturally, and economically than the sum of its separated parts. Jane Jacobs had it right. But voting yes and accepting the downtown master plan as a city document actually guarantees absolutely nothing, much to the point of those who spoke before me. But it does guarantee something. It guarantees opportunity. That it guarantees an opportunity to provide Davenport and the Quad Cities a new vision of hope and a world after COVID. An opportunity to say with confidence that we will meet the challenge to balance both downtown's flood protection and the needs of our century-long commitment to make the riverfront vibrant and usable. An opportunity to use our most precious downtown resource of all, our public streets, our gathering spaces and our sidewalks, to prioritize people, walkability, safety, and small business growth, not speeding traffic in a hurry to be somewhere else. Opportunity to build more equitable business ecosystems that lift local entrepreneurs, provides competitive advantages to attract workforce for large office users, yet still looks out for the little guy too. An opportunity to build a nationally competitive, diverse, new and housing historic housing stock for every income level and family background. An opportunity to further leverage our historic districts and our backbone of the arts, hospitality and entertainment industries that led the last 20 years of growth and will likely lead the next. An opportunity to strategically and intentionally Plan our open spaces, our public assets, and our private properties to create new development that both builds the city's tax base and our cultural well-being. Opportunity to reach out to people who may not have felt welcome in the past. To begin calling downtown their own and to build a place that they see themselves in again and their children enjoying. And finally, we have an opportunity to lead. To show through action and vision that we believe in Davenport's best days are still ahead of it. I'd like to thank the WXY team, our steering committee, the DDP and chamber boards, our staff, city staff, city council, and the more than 75 organizations represented by our stakeholder interviews and the 550 members of the public who responded to our surveys through a very difficult year in which public gatherings were nearly impossible. But most of all, I'd like to thank my colleague, Alicia Espy without whom this downtown master plan of this caliber would have never been possible. It was her unflinching attention to detail that will make this a living document that Davenporters can be proud of for years to come. And even following a global pandemic, she remained laser focused on facilitating and leading what I believe to be one of the best downtown master plans of any city of any size in the United States in 2021. No plan can guarantee what will get accomplished. Only we can decide that. 
What I can guarantee is that DDP will work tirelessly to ensure that both the private and public sectors work in concert to get as much of this plan done as humanly possible. We are a resilient city, and so please vote yes to this civic roadmap so that we may indeed produce something greater socially, culturally, and economically than the sum of our otherwise separated parts. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Pausing. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Alderman Ambrose, Alderman McGinnis. Any discussion from Alder folks? And I see Alderman Ambrose. Thank you, Honor. First off, Carl, count your blessings. You got Alicia. Because if it wasn't for her, you probably wouldn't be here right now. You know, I've been around for a while, and uh, I can remember when the River Vision process was going through, and some of it's been highly successful, and other hasn't. So, you know, Carl, like you say, it's a good roadmap. We got a lot of them stacked in closets around the city hall, but you know, let's uh, we'll give it a run. I know with Alicia's assistance or leadership, you know, probably more likely to happen. Thanks, Alderman Jobson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one question to start. Uh, before Corporate Counsel Warner. Um, when the uh, Village of East Davenport plan went through, I think, what, about seven years ago now, did we accept it or acknowledge receipt? Do we, do we know the answer to that? No, we'd have to look, but our custom is to simply accept these reports. And, and just to follow that up again, whether it was, whether it'd be to acknowledge receipt of the or to accept, it doesn't change our actions and, and anything, correct? Right. Correct. And then again, if, you know, for semantic purposes, if, if uh, we did want to change the wording, a simple motion to, to change is all that would be needed. And then obviously second it voted upon? Yes. Okay. okay. Then I would like to make a motion to change the wording of this motion to motion to acknowledge receipt of the downtown Davenport Partnerships Master Plan. So, Alderman Jobson, if there's before is a second, if you'd like to yeah, I'd wait, I'll hold wait till everybody talks, and then sure. I'll come back to you. Sure, if and that's okay with everyone. Roger that. Okay, um, Alderman Peacock, you had your hand up. No, no, you're good. Okay, thank you, Alderman Grip. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I spoke in support of this uh, uh, last week, but I wanted to start off by thanking uh, Kyle for his inspiring words, but also uh, his, the inspiring plan uh, that his team has put together. Uh, thank you both and, and the entire team and all of the, the, the public who took part in this. Um, before I was on council, I think there, there used to be a lot of semantical arguments about whether you accept a plan or you do, do anything else. Uh, since I've been on, you know, um, we've done it this way and I, if I could ask, I know uh, Alderman Jobjins made the motion um, that we just continue that practice. Because um, the truth is, this is there is no obligation here because we have a process for how we uh, fund pro projects and programs and our budget works in a certain way. It has to meet, make the budget public discussion. We do that uh, for hours on Saturday, open to everyone. Then it has to come onto the agenda and then it has to be read uh, for two cycles or maybe uh, three different cycles, and it takes weeks of, of public input. That's the process for obligating the city's money. This is accepting a plan that's put together that gives us a roadmap on where um, we all need to march collectively together. And like I said last week, in the grand scheme of things, if we're able to implement 40% of this, that would be, um, a really incredible accomplishment. Think about all of the entities that are encompassed in this plan. You have private landowners, you have public landowners, you have different public entities involved, the state, the county, the city, uh, the federal government might come in with funding, you have nonprofits, and then you have the SMID. This plan is bringing all those people together collectively to say, hey, we have a plan, we have a roadmap to move forward. Uh, 
it's ludicrous to think that this is an obligation. You can't obligate uh, future city councils to spend money. We have a process for that. But if you thought about it as an obligation, we would never accept or acknowledge any plan because if 100% of this plan were executed at, as an obligation by the city, you would be talking about tens or $100 million. But that's not the case here because we're not obligating ourselves and we have other community partners. This is the roadmap. We, we ought to stop with the semantics of this, leave that in years gone by, and we understand we're accepting the plan. We're not obligating the dollars. We will have conversations about anything that comes forward, whether it's in this plan or not in this plan. Um, so I, I will not, not vote to change the language, and I will be supporting this. And I thank you for your time listening to me. Thank you. Alderman Dorman. Thank you, uh, Mayor Matson. <laughs> and uh, I, I would like to mimic what uh, Alderman Grip said, but I, I think one of the other key things that I, I continue to think of is uh, just all of our discussions about uh, partnerships and uh, that we've had so far today. And what this is of us, the city of Davenport and the downtown Davenport partnership, how we are partners in this together if we accept this plan or not, or if we uh, changed it to uh, change the wording of what we're doing here tonight, the downtown Davenport partnership still has this and is still able to move forward with a good chunk of the items in here and they can still use it as their, uh, their guiding document. But it wouldn't be of us of good partners to accept the plan and uh, agree that we are all marching together towards the same goal. And uh, I know that uh, the, the city of Davenport has seen some great growth uh, over the past uh, five, 10 years, and we can overlay that growth uh, with a, a map and the growth and success of downtown. And so uh, even though a lot of times, it, sometimes people can feel that it's downtown's getting a, a treatment better than other people, downtown is uh, the, the head of our snake that really helps us drive along this city. And we need to continue to be great partners with them because when uh, downtown succeeds, all of Davenport su succeeds. So I think it's important that we make it official that we are accepting uh, this as our plan that we also will be marching towards with uh, the, the partners of downtown and, and many other entities as well. Thank you. Thank you. Alderwoman McGinnis. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, yeah, I would also like to, uh, like to speak in support of retaining the um, approval the resolution as written. Um, um, I am. I have the benefit and uh, and the opportunity, I guess, as third ward alderman, because downtown is in third ward, to sit as a non-voting member of the downtown partnership. I don't vote, um, but I go to these meetings, and I will tell you, I am astounded every single time at the work that goes on. Uh, the number of the number of initiatives that this organization has and keeps in the fire, um, the things they continue to do despite the um, um, despite uh, COVID, uh, the the ways they kept moving forward and found ways to move forward. Um, our our downtown would be very very much poorer without this group and without all the people, um, Kyle, Alicia. Alicia others that are on staff and, and the, the members of the board and the people who support this organization. I don't want us to do anything. Uh, I think as we start, we start playing with semantics because we somehow feel like, you know, we're gonna be obligating um, the city, which we all know we aren't. We will not be obligating because, you know, funding is, is voted on for specific things and that's when we make those decisions. I'd also like to remind everybody here uh, in listening that this council turns over every two years. Um, you know, there may be, you know, a year from now, half the people not sitting here that are sitting here right now. And that's very, that makes it very difficult in this city for organizations to get things done. These, this group, though, will be there. Whether we're there or not, they're going to be there and they're going to continue to push. So for us to sort of play games with the wording or try to somehow make it seem less than we do for everything else, given all the obstacles that a two-year cycle puts in front of any organization that we're in partnership with, um, just seems ludicrous to me. And so I will not vote to change the language and I vote very strongly to support this plan. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Peacock. 
Thank you. I have a quick question, Corey or Tom. Um, and I, I'd like to just clear a little air for everybody that's watching or listening. This is not the first time we accept a Smith's proposal. Is that a true statement? Correct. This is not the first time. And it's clear that this has always been the same verbiage that has always been used. Is that a correct statement? Uh, yeah, if I could add something to that answer, Go though. Ahead. The debate that occurred years ago was that the language used to read approving the plan. So we would be approving the plan, and that really was a misnomer because, as Alderman Grip pointed out, there are many, many stages that have to happen legally Absolutely. before any component of a plan can happen and the dollars be legally obligated to make it happen. So go ahead, Corey. So I'd, I would have one thing to add on. I think there's a little nuance in that there are city plans that we bring forward. And if you think about the Elmore corridor, when the city initiates the plan, you may see a different language because that was initiated by the city compared to a plan initiated by an organization outside the city. So I just want to be clear, this is not the first time we've done this. And yes, this verbiage has always, prior to those special projects, this is nothing new and this, the verbiage has always been in place. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Condon. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> yeah, I don't want to, do anything that signals any hesitation uh, in in the importance of this plan. Thank you, Mr. Carter, for speaking with such clarity about um, why this is important and why this matters. In modern American cities, downtown revitalization doesn't just happen. So much of the growth that our city enjoys is just sort of a perpetual uh, uh, inertia or the opposite of inertia, momentum <laughs> that, you know, the next gas station gets built, the next mini mall gets built, subdivisions, that's the way America grows. But to uh, invest in a downtown in a way that you're trying to do uh, what we call placemaking, building culture, uh, making a sustainable uh, local economy, those things kind of go against the grain. They kind of go against the marketplace until they become the marketplace. So again, I want to uh, stress the importance of this and, and why it matters. Long term, um, it's going to be what makes the city sustainable, both our population and our economy, because as um, the big cities get bigger and, and continue to pull away from these mid-sized cities, it, it's the ones that have um, the amenities and the, um, again, the, the culture and the placemaking that, uh, that we design. And um, Alderwoman McGinnis makes a tremendous point because what, what the downtown partnership does do is it, it provides us continuity from year to year. Um, it's very easy to lose your, lose your way, especially when the uh, cast of characters changes every two years. But um, I know from experience that when uh, private investors are looking to um, come to the downtown, um, they look to people like the downtown partnership and they figure out, um, you know, where they can put their investment in a way that is intentional for, for the overall growth of the city and, and, and everything that we're trying to do here. We've all been in communities that, uh, or even in our local community, um, looked at different um, areas of growth that, that didn't look purposeful. And, and I think um, we're always the better for it when we, when we move forward again with intention. So um, I do not support changing the verbiage and um, I, I will be aiming my focus um, with this plan fully in mind as we move forward. Thank you. Anyone else? Pausing. Oh, done. I apologize. I didn't see your ye little yellow sign. Uh, Alderman that's Dunn. right. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, I, I want to thank Alderman Jobin for, you know, coming out and wanting to try to change language just, just to make sure everything is clear here. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with my colleagues about not changing the language and accept this plan as much as I accepted the West End focus plan. So I would hope that my colleagues, when we start looking at some of these other plans, some of this plan, we start dusting off some of the other ones we've had as well and get moving on them. So thank you. Okay. And uh, are you going to make a motion before I come to you? Because I want to have to say a couple things. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'll add my uh, color commentary also. So um, uh, someone who grew up here and was a kid remembers um, the carnival craziness downtown. The downtown had a dump. Uh, just right over there. Um, and folks used to um, do, you know, 
do hunting exercises, and that was what the downtown was like. And any of you who remember know what I'm talking about, right? Um, and I've been educated, so um, watch this place transfer from that arena to the downtown being a focus to when the mall came and then things left downtown and residential went out to the mall. But as times have changed again, we now have developed into the leading downtown probably in the region, an education center, a hospitality leader, uh, the amenities, the forward thinking, um, the a residential living community. Um, I've been educated as when I, you know, 14 years ago, my goodness, uh, I joined Alderman Ambrose on this little dais here. Um, and was uh, a bit of a different mindset on what was going on. And, you know, you're an old war, a ward alderman and you're thinking about your folks and how does it go and you're trying to understand the complexities of the city and how it intertwines. But over the time, I've, I have watched, I have listened, and I have seen uh, the tremendous effort and tremendous uh, focus and work that uh, the community, quite frankly, has come together with the with the with the shining light there uh, of of our downtown and how it's how it's developed when thousands of people now choose, that's where I want to live. I mean, I love my neighborhood and that's where I want to live. But thousands of people now choose to live there, um, and instead of people talking about, oh my God, what's down there? Now they talk about, my God, let's go down there because of what is going on, and so. Accepting this, I would encourage the council to accept it. I would encourage the council to to keep this uh, on your forefront. And I thank uh, Mr. Carter, and I appreciate uh, your comments to Miss um, uh, Alicia, uh, because as we know, as we sit up here, and I certainly don't speak for any council member, but I think I can say safely that we realize the working folks, meaning the executors, I always call Ms. Spiegel and her folks, the ones that execute the plan, Ms. Alicia, who executes y'all's plan, um, and has done a great job, in my opinion. Previously, I didn't, I didn't years ago, didn't think it was as good when, when people like the downtown will come and talk to individual older folks or work with the staff and dialogue and and say, this is our thoughts, what do you think? And then go to the public and say, what do you think? And then take those thoughts and put them together, and that's what you did here. Because we've all seen many times where we discuss pieces of things. Uh, last time I said a puzzle, and we'll talk about just the, G the ground transportation center, or just the old uh, Y site, or just this. What this thing has done is put those things together and say, here's the vision going forward of how all these come together. And I applaud your efforts and I'd encourage the council to vote yes. Mr. Job, anyone else before I go back to Mr. Jobson? Alderman Jobson. Thanks again for a second shot. Um, first, uh, Mr. Carter, I was gonna vote yes for this motion regardless. Um, please don't take, <laughs> don't take my, my thoughts of a motion as not, not thinking this is a great plan. I mean, you, put, you guys put together a great product you know, echo the sentiments of my colleagues that it's great to have this direction for the downtown. So, you know, this vital engine that's, you know, part of our city can can be successful. Um, and so apologize for that. I, I really do like the semantics and the wording to acknowledge, but reading, reading the room, I will not actually make that motion. So I'll, I will uh, avoid it, exercise in futility and I will take this little chunk of the sole of my shoe out of my mouth and be quiet. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Alderman Jordan, I'm always, uh, we love hearing from everybody's perspective. So always think if your perspective is always welcome and um, we appreciate different views. Um, we, or at least we should and thank you for that. So anyone else? Pausing? Okay, Mr. Cook, please call the roll. McGinnis? Yes. Dickman? Ms. Dickman? Okay, carry on. Up. Dorman? Yes. Condon? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Ambrose? Yes. Lee? Yes. Jobjen? Yes. Grip? Yes. Peacock? Yes. 
And I will go back. Dickman? Okay, very good. All right, we have nine yeses, Your Honor. Okay, that resolution passes. Thank you, or that motion passes, yes. All right, next we move to all items, a motion for approval of all items on the consent agenda. So moved. There's a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Dorman? Yes. Grip? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Condon? Yes. Lee? Yes. Peacock? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Ambrose? Yes. Jobjen? Yes. And Dickman? She's still gone, okay. Nine yeses, Your Honor. Very good, the consent agenda is approved. The next item is any other ordinances, resolutions, or motions. There are none for this evening. Next item, is there any public with business other than what was discussed on the agenda? So again, five minutes, name or ward. If not from here, love to know where you're from. Thank you. Dale Gilmore, sixth ward. I, I wish that Kyle would have spoken before me. I, I wouldn't have said what I said. Um, you know, th there was some clarity there. There was some clarity there. There was some clarity there. And, and I think that, you know, everybody now understands the intent of the motion and, and I'm, I'm glad you all voted for it. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I guess, uh, I'd like to revisit this thing about accepting versus uh, receiving uh, because uh, actually, actually, as you know, I, my, my biggest uh, concern about our city is our riverfront. And uh, in um, one of the uh, last uh, uh, RIC meetings that I attended last year, um, the, um, the um, Sasaki, uh, their project manager, one of the best uh, landscape architecture and planning firms in the country has partnered with, with Green. I'm, I'm so happy to see that. But at that point, um, the uh, the woman, I guess she was remote on that, she'd asked the members of the RIC which direction were they to take for our riverfront. And um, our uh, the uh, D. Brummer had said unequivocally, you go with the plan that was put together a couple years ago that uh, the partnership and the figure came up with. And you know, that's the one that I feel is uh, so lacking in uh, amenity and, and, and reason and lo logic, I guess, and beauty for that matter. But anyway, uh, so the, uh, the, uh, the person from Sasaki came by saying, came away from that, they're going with the plan. The plan that I've talked about for council many times, how bad it is. And that's essentially the one that they're going with. And uh, I was quite upset about that. So I talked to Steve Ahrens. Um, I said, when was this plan accepted? And he said, it was accepted by council, March 25th, 2019. And I said, that's only a few days after the plan came out. It was accepted. So I think there's, there's room for confusion there because I got that, that the council approved it. And perhaps Dee Brummer, who actually was in, involved in putting that, I think, very godforsaken plan together, I think she's probably thought that that meant that they've got to go, go ahead and, and Sasaki, as far as I can see at that meeting, they're going with that plan. And, uh, per, and I, I texted Steve Ahrens again, I said, when did the RIC approve it? And I haven't got an answer. I don't think they ever did because I've spoken to some of the RIC members and, and they're as astounded as I am because as far as they're concerned, it hasn't been approved. So I'm gonna give you one more thing about that plan because after last week's meeting, I was so irate. I found out that one of the things I was so against, it's not gonna happen anyway. And that's the tearing down of the limestone uh, seawalls here. Uh, that's not gonna happen. Perhaps that's news to some of you. Uh, perhaps it's been decided upon already and just hasn't been recorded. But that's not gonna happen. But if you don't do that, what are you left with? The biggest thing on that plan was this curvy, where the seawall used to be, they're gonna have some type of an angled stone, uh, whatever it is, much like Ralph Allen's seawall, except instead of gravel, you'd have an expensive layer of, of granite or some kind of, of stone. So that this whole area is no longer 
viable. It's not part of the plan, as far as I understand. This area where they're cutting into Harrison, that's not going to happen either. The city has just gotten through adding bike paths and railroad crossings through here. Uh, presumably, what was considered art, those uh, $2 million bus shelters at the end of each of our streets, those aren't going to happen. My question is, what plan do we have left? What do we have left? Our most important asset of our city, the riverfront. We don't have anything left. We have no plan. And for Sasaki to be working on what well, isn't a real plan is a real shame and could be a waste. And uh, I just wanted to bring that up. Thanks so much. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Name's Derek Cornett, Seventh Ward. Uh, like to thank the city public works for doing a pretty good job of keeping the streets clean in my area. However, on West Garfield Street, uh, there's this big hill there, and the average age of the people that live on that hill. Uh, is probably about 65. I'm one of the youngsters. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're supposed to clear your uh, sidewalks and stuff within uh, 24 hours of uh, the snow stopping. Well, you know, I get out there and I clear my sidewalk and everything's fine, looks good. Come back an hour later and there's four more inches of snow on it because the snow plows went through. I don't know if the angle isn't right on, on the snow plows or the speed is wrong, but I'm getting tired and all my neighbors are getting tired too of cleaning their their sidewalks two or three times because the snow plow came through. Today there was I have a three and a half foot berm of snow and ice between the street and my sidewalk. My sidewalk was clean. I came back you know, a few minutes later, and there were four, four inches of snow that had come over a three and a half foot berm. Now something's wrong. You know, either, and you can be out there shoveling and they'll drive by and wave at you as they push, you know, another four feet of snow and into your uh, driveway. Uh, I don't know if they're trying to be funny, friendly, but it's not funny. Uh, us old guys, we don't, we don't want to do something four or five times. Uh, you know, give us a little consideration, a little thought about how y'all approach that stuff. Because, uh, you know, <laughs> we just, I clean my sidewalk once. If they come by and bury it three or four inches, I'm not cleaning it again. You know, my obligation to the city is to clean it. I cleaned it. You made the mess. You know, don't think I'm paying the fine. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Hear it, okay. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ken Crokin. I live in the sixth ward, ably represented by Mr. Jobjin. And uh, I am here tonight on behalf of Main Street Baseball and the Quad City River Bandits to thank you for your support tonight in uh, rededicating the uh, uh, 
small bit of South Game Street, south of the railroad tracks to Royals Way. We're very excited about our new relationship with the Kansas City Royals. Uh, we have contractual relations with them for the next 10 years, which is dramatically different from all our previous uh, MLB affiliations. Uh, we think that we can uh, significantly enhance both the baseball experience, but more importantly, the, uh, the economic impact and benefit that uh, the modern Woodman Park uh, Stadium offers to the city. Uh, our estimates show that uh, we could eventually get to a level of $30 million of annual economic impact from operations alone. We're already providing a substantial economic impact, but we think there's more potential. We appreciate your support, and uh, we look forward to um, closer relationships going forward. Thank you all. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. Uh, my name is Kirk Coster. Uh, myself and my 91-year-old mother are uh, joint owners of 2131 Hickory Grove Road. Um, I guess I'm chapter two in the, the plowing issue. Uh, I have about 50 yards of uh, property on Hickory Grove Road, about 30 to 40 yards on Lombard Street. As of 1.05 p.m. yesterday morning, or yesterday afternoon, my walk looked like that. Perfectly clear, one and a half pass wide. As of 1 p.m. this afternoon, my street looked, or my sidewalk looked like that. Um, Mr. Ambrose knows me intimately. Sorry, sir, we're just going right. to shut the door there. Mr. Ambrose knows me intimately over the years. Um, this has been my mother's property for 65 years. She takes pride in it. Um, last year when I was there, I had worked my way down Hickory Grove Road, got around to Lombard. As I'm doing Lombard, the plow driver is going about 60 miles an hour down Hickory Grove Road and everything is flying all over the sidewalk I just did no more than an hour previous. It's not that difficult, folks. Slow down, the snow rolls over onto the curb, and it's no problem. Um, I understand that the city is citing this year for sidewalks. I'm telling you what, I'm not gonna do this again. I might wait until the next snow and go do it, but it's been done once. So I hope I, I meant to come to a uh, public works meeting, but this was more timely to come tonight. And I think a simple slow down to your drivers would be a great help. Thank you. Anyone else? Pausing. Hearing and see when. Hearing and seeing no one, motion to adjourn. Motion and a second. All in favor to adjourn. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you. Be safe. Appreciate everybody's uh, efforts tonight.